Hi YouTube, I'm Jack, a junior doctor working in London and I finished my core surgical training. Today's video is about how to answer clinical scenario questions for the core surgical training interview. These are really important because not only do they take up half of your interview, but also the structure that you use to answer them can really help your score at interview. I'll be talking about what the clinical scenarios involve. I'll give you an example of a weak answer. I'll then run through the structure that I use to answer these questions uh, during my surgical ST3 interviews. And at the end of the video, I'll put these all together into a better answer for this kind of question. Timestamps are up here, so let's go. Please note, I will not be revealing interview questions during this video as that goes against the interview agreement. All the examples are made up by myself. Clinical scenario questions are designed to test how well you manage surgical emergency. This can be, for example, sepsis or bleeding or a trauma patient. And the purpose is to see if you would make a safe surgical trainee. The station itself is allocated half of your interview time, which is 10 out of 20 minutes and in that time you can be asked two different scenarios. Within each scenario you're typically asked an introductory question uh, with possibly one or two follow-up questions as the scenario develops. Now let's look at a scenario that I've made up. So here's an example of a weak or average answer that includes a few pitfalls that people tend to make. For that I'll use an example that I made up which is you are the core surgical trainee on call and the nurse calls you about a 60 year old patient who has developed a fever after his abdominal surgery. What do you do? I would start by performing an A to E assessment. For airway I'll assess the patient is talking and has no secretions by the mouth. For breathing I'll examine the chest, take bloods for a blood culture and routine bloods including group and save and clotting. Uh, I then contact my registrar on call. The patient is five days post elective anterior resection, has a fever of 38.8, tachycardia and hypotension. He is peritonistic with rebound tenderness and guarding in the left iliac fossa. His lactate is three on the blood gas and the chest x-ray is unremarkable. I'll start the patient on antibiotics and I will contact my registrar and uh, tell them that this patient might need to go uh, for an operation. Now for that answer, you probably would pick up a few points. Uh, however, let's move on to the structure that I use to answer clinical scenario questions. The structure I use uh, is essentially, firstly, a general statement about the main issues with the scenario. Uh, secondly, the A to E approach, uh, focused history and initial management. Three is to gather more information. And four is to escalate to your senior uh, and discuss possible investigations and management. Or in short, gag sim. The instinct many people have is to dive into an answer with A, B, C, D, E and reel off their whole speech about uh, assessing and managing uh, the patient. Uh, now, although that's well-intentioned, don't do it. The interviewers are looking to see that you can recognize an emergency situation and a good way to show them that you're thinking about that uh, is to start with a statement saying what the main issues are from this scenario. In my example, a patient who has a fever after abdominal surgery could have sepsis, which is an emergency. I also know that they could have an expected post-operative acute inflammatory reaction. However, the most dangerous diagnosis is sepsis and you don't have enough information in the vignettes to tell you otherwise. By saying this one statement at the start of your answer, you show the examiner that you understand that this is an emergency situation potentially and that the action required has to be immediate. Next, you launch into your a, B, C, D, E. The thing to note is that examiners have probably heard about 20 of these in the same day, so the key is not to dwell on tiny details too much. Another good thing to say is that you would assess A, B, C, D, E according to advanced life support guidelines, and that you would ask the bedside nurse to join you in the assessment uh, as this is an unwell patient and you'll likely need help. Following this, make sure you take a focused history, which for the abdominal patient would be the onset of the pain, where the pain is, and also any associated symptoms such as vomiting. One of the two things that I learned from the START surgery course by uh, the Royal College of Surgeons uh, is essentially that when you're assessing an unwell patient, the structure of your assessment should be firstly A, B, C, D, E, and then you should gather more information by looking through the patient's notes. By that I mean looking through the operation notes to see if it was a difficult procedure, uh, looking through the anaesthetic chart to see if they were unstable during the operation, uh, and also looking through their admission clerking for the past medical history and the observation charts and lab results, uh, as well as the drug chart. This is really useful for establishing a differential diagnosis for what is happening, and you'll need this information before you go on to the next step, which is senior discussion. Now this is something that obviously you'll need 
need to mention at some point during your answer because if you have an unwell patient then your immediate senior must know about it. What you need to do is not just say I will discuss the patient with my senior, you also want to offer differential diagnoses investigations and management to help treat the patient. So now let's put this all together into an example of a better answer. I'll keep it a little bit abbreviated uh, just for time uh, and it's more so that you see the, the structure and flow of the answer that's important. Also please bear with me because it's been about uh, a year since I've done this. This patient has a post-operative pyrexia and my main concern would be sepsis, possibly due to a complication from the operation. The other differential diagnosis is a normal postoperative pyrexia. However, I cannot rule this out with the information I'm given. Sepsis isn't a medical emergency, so I'll need to go and assess the patient immediately. When I assess the patient, I'll ask the bedside nurse to join me and assess the patient in an 8E manner according to advanced life support guidelines. For airway and breathing, I'll ensure they're talking and I'll examine their chest, record respiratory rate, saturations, uh, request a chest x-ray and apply 15 litres of oxygen through a non-rebreathe mask. For circulation, I will uh, assess their fluid status, including peripheral perfusion. I'll ask for the pulse and the blood pressure and establish wide bore intravenous access in order to take routine bloods, including group and save and clotting, uh, as well as a venous blood gas. I would also start intravenous fluids. For disability, I'll assess the patient's consciousness level, pain, and also their blood glucose from the blood gas. And I'll ask the nurse for a temperature. In exposure, I'll perform a top to tail examination, focusing especially on the surgical site uh, to look for any evidence of peritonism. Following the A to E, I will ask a focused history from the patient for uh, when their symptoms began and if they have any associated uh, symptoms such as vomiting. Following this, I'll review the patient's notes, especially their operation note to see if the operation was difficult. I'll review the anaesthetic chart to see if they were unstable in the procedure. I'll also look at their drug chart, clerking and observation chart. As this patient has a fever day five after abdominal surgery with a bowel anastomosis, I'm concerned about an anastomotic leak causing sepsis. This is a surgical emergency, and as there is sepsis, I would like to ensure I complete the sepsis six, which is to take blood cultures, venous blood gas, insert a urinary catheter for fluid output monitoring, and also start oxygen, IV fluids, and antibiotics within the first hour. I would also like to inform the registrar on call to tell them about the patient. I'll explain the main differential diagnosis is sepsis due to anastomotic leak with a patient that's hemodynamically unstable with a raised lactate. I'll explain what I've done so far, which is the sepsis six, and I'd recommend that this patient might need to have a CT abdomen pelvis with rectal contrast. As this patient is unwell, I would like to escalate to the critical care outreach team to get some further support. And if he does not improve with fluid resuscitation, then we may need to contact uh, intensive care. After the patient has been stabilised and treated, I can think about reflecting on this scenario for my portfolio, as this was a good learning opportunity. If there is indeed a complication, then this will need to be recorded in the morbidity and mortality statistics and presented at the next clinical governance meeting. In addition, to further the educational value from the case, I could prepare a case presentation for my colleagues and discuss the management of the septic general surgical patient. Okay, so I hope that gives a brief overview of how to answer such a question. At the end, I added a couple of extra things that if you have time during the interview, you can mention, uh, which is of course, looking at morbidity and mortality if there was a complication, uh, and also the learning opportunities for yourself and for your colleagues. I would however suggest that you focus on the most important parts, which are the parts I've outlined uh, in GAGSIM, uh, before you focus on anything else. Next up, I'll make a video about how to answer clinical management stations. And if you haven't already, watch my video on preparing for core surgical training interview. I'll try to answer any questions in the comments below. Like and subscribe and see you next time.